Hello everybody, welcome back to the 80 Slashers YouTube channel. In this video, we will continue counting down my top 80 slashers of the 80s. And we will be focusing and looking at numbers 30 through 21. Alright, so now we're, we're really starting to, to get into it. These um, The first few films we're about to talk about, even though, in my opinion, may not be, you know, the best of the best, or like the true heavyweights, um, they're still considered by most as, you know, some of the all-time classics. Uh, the, the rest of the films on this list, again, in my opinion, are um, all, you know, bona fide, you know, 100% certified heavyweights of the, the 80s slasher subgenre of horror and you know again in my opinion of course um but you know all all 10 of these films that we're about to talk about i feel they 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 all represent the genre so perfect um they're just they're all films that i can easily just always go back to and revisit and they just um they just provide a sort of you know like one of like a like a comfort food with me you know you just watch them they just they just feel good, as if you're watching, you know, your one of your favorite genres of film. Uh, so, so yeah, this is where um, this is where we're we're really getting at with with this little series of videos. Uh, all right, so yeah, let let's just get right into it. But you know, before we do, as always, you know, you know, just just be aware that these are you know my own personal rankings which, you know, are solely based on my own likes, tastes, preferences, you know, within the genre. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. And, um, yeah, let's kick this off by starting out, uh, taking a look at number 30. All right, so coming in at number 30 from 1989, we have Nightmare Beach. Now, uh, this is a fun one. This is, you know, I've always, I've talked about this film quite a bit on this channel. I just recently did a talking about foreign slashers. Um, but, you know, this this film's equal part slasher film and equal part, you know, teen sex comedy. You know, like Porky's and uh, Revenge of the Nerds, uh, Spring Break, those types of things. It's it's, it's a nice even even split, I feel. Um, you know, but but it's also done with the the Italian style um, because you know this is you know this is made even though some American actors in it this is an Italian made film so it's pretty unique in the, in that sense that it's it 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 feels it feels like an American film but it also feels like an Italian style European style film so yeah pretty unique for sure. Um, you know, the, the, the setting for this film is, is fantastic. You know, it has that beach town setting, you know, like, like the whole thing is like on like a, like a March break, spring break. Um, and there's this little beachside resort with hotels and resorts and restaurants and all that stuff. It's it just great. It, it just, it, it's a great setting for one of these films. It just, just provides like a really consistent tone throughout which I just, I, I love, you know, because it, like I said, it, it puts you in that sweet spot between, like, the horror film and, like, these sex comedies, so, yeah, it's really good. Um, the, the, the acting, the cast in this is, is, is way above average compared to usually these films, you know? We have, you know, act, like, John Saxon is in this film, Michael Parks is in this film, and a few other really good, like, established actors. It's just, um, yeah, it, it's... It, it really helps elevate the film, you know, because of course you have some of like the younger teen characters and they're, you know, typical for the genre. But um, these, you know, these more established actors really lend a sense of this is like a like a well-made film, like everything about it, like like just the writing, the editing, the cinematography, the direction, the just everything about it, it, it just comes off as a... Um, as a, n not like a cheap little teen hack and slash film. There's there's more to it than this, and it it feels like it and it looks like it, which you know I always appreciate in these films. 
Um, the kills in Nightmare Beach are really fun. You know, there's one of the main weapons is like an actual motorcycle. Um, the killer picks up people and straps them to the back of the motorcycle and like electrocutes them, which is weird. It's it's it's, it's a little silly, it's a little cheesy, but it's it's also super fun. Um, like they put some effects in, like as people are getting electrocuted, and it, it's just it's it's unique. It's just I don't know. I I I enjoy the the silly kills in this one, um, but there is some like you know straightforward slasher kills as well. So like I said, it, it has a little bit of everything everything um you know the, the the gore is is pretty good at times you know you get there's some good nudity uh, like i said the setting is fantastic this film kind of has it all it really is all the things that we want even though it's like a late 80s slasher so it and it doesn't feel like your you know the early 80s slashers but it has all the elements that we want and expect in these films so um yeah but like i said it, but it it has all that stuff but it 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 does have that slight european feel to it um, but at, like I said, at the same time, it, it, it feels American too. Like it, it's really weird. It, it, it's, it's pretty unique and it's like, it's like, it's definitely a hybrid film, but, um, it, it works. I, I think it works really well. And in terms of like the story, the way it, the film is structured and laid out, it, it, there's definitely some giallo, um, things going on here. Um, it just, just kind of just by the nature of how the story is told and how it unfolds with the conclusion, um, I, I, it works for me. I, I like, I like those types of, um, you know, the slasher giallo hybrid mix and this, this one does it really well. It's just, but it just plays it more. It's not as, it's not as serious as some of those films. It, 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 this is like a fun slasher just because of the setting, you know? Um, and because it's from 1989, you got like, like the, the different stylings, the hair and the, the clothing and the, the eighties dialogue and, you know, you're bordering on getting into the nineties. Um, it, it's just, it's, I don't know. This is a really fun one for me. It, it works probably better than it should, but, um, I don't know. I, I really like Nightmare Beach. So yeah, number 30, uh, Nightmare Beach. All right, let's move on and take a look at number 29. Okay, so coming at number 29, from 1984, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street. So yeah, so maybe this is controversial, I don't know, um, it probably is, but this, honestly, this is the highest that I can, that I can rate this film uh, in these rankings for me, um, you know, if this was a list of, you know, 80s horror films, it would probably be higher than 29, but, you know, since I'm ranking 80 slashers, and, you know, I'm comparing them to one another, um, yeah, 29, this is, this is where I have it, uh, the, this, you know, obviously, this is the first in the original film in the franchise, and this is my favorite in, in the franchise, and for me, like, part three maybe comes close, but, um, yeah, it's, there's too much silliness in that film as well, this is, for me, for sure, the, the highlight of the franchise, um, you know, Freddy, Freddy Krueger is at his best here, he's still pretty scary, um, there, there's a, a couple, you know, there's some one-liners, there's some humor, but it's not over the top, it, the, it's more of a horror film, for sure, than what it later becomes, like, um, and, you know, this film's kind of scary, especially, like, maybe not as much now, but back, back in the 80s, um, this film was really scary, um, it's just the, the the whole concept that that's why this film is 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 so great just the whole concept of a killer stalking kids in their dreams um it's just it's so creative and it's um you know as a kid or like a young adult or whatever watching this film for the first time and it's like good luck going to sleep after this like if you're unaware of the setting and you watch it it's um it's it's freaky the whole premise is just it it's really creative uh, and, and besides that, like, the film itself is just, it, it's one of the better made films in the genre, you know, high budget, big budget, good directing, you know, Wes Craven is always, always fantastic, good acting, um, again, John Saxon, <laughs> we got a young Johnny Depp, um, yeah, there's, there's lots to like, um, about this film, like, and, like I said, and there's no question, like, this is, this is a great film, it really is, um, and it's, it's an important film within, within the, just the horror, um, community just in the horror genre of film um there's, there's not too many that are as important as this um and it, it's it's still fun to watch it, it really is um you know the reason why i have it at 29 because I, I know 
I know a lot of people probably have this a lot higher. Um, I, I'm just, honestly, like, if you've been following this channel, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of this whole franchise. It's just, it's just not for me. Um, you know, I prefer a more straightforward, typical hack and slash, you know? Like, the killer is not, you know, a, someone in a dream, not, not supernatural. Um, I, I just prefer my slashers more straight up. That's just my preference, you know? Um, but for this style, that obviously this is this is the the version that that did it the best, like for a supernatural slasher. Um, it really brought that little sub sub genre within the slasher um, out more. People started making these types of films all the time now because this was so good and it was so it was so popular. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like it's like the ending. I'll say this: the ending kind of spoils it for me. I don't. I I I I've never liked the ending. It's confusing. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, maybe maybe to other people it does. I just didn't like. I just didn't like the ending to this film. It kind of puts a, like like as the credits roll, it just kind of leaves a a bad taste in my mouth. You know. So I, I I don't know. There's just a few things about this film that just I can't get it up in my top ten. You know. It's just I, I just can't do it. Um. And like I said, I, I know I'm in the minority with this, but um, I don't know. I, I feel coming in at number 29, I have this ranked ahead of a lot of really great slasher films that I really like. And I don't know, this is just the highest I can go. And I, I feel like I'm defending myself because I feel like people, you know, I should have this higher. But it is what it is. So yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, coming in at number 29. All right, let's move on. Take a look at number 28. Okay, so coming at number 28 from 1981, we have Just Before Dawn. Uh, this is a really fun film. This is um, this this is actually a, a newer film to me. I had never seen it before up until like a year or two ago uh, when I reviewed it on this channel. And um, so yeah, this one took me by surprise. I knew it's one that people liked for, you know, it, it's a well-liked film. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. I, I think this is fantastic. I, I'm a sucker for these outdoor, you know, deep woods types of slasher. Um, like, just that setting is just, is so ideal for these films. Just like, like, you know, when people go to, like, like the Friday the 13th, like the sleepaway camp types of settings. Like, that's so good for these, for these types of films. And I think these deep wood, um, outdoor settings is, is equally, um, just, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a great setting. Um, you know, because the woods are dangerous, you know, just going out in there with the backpack on your back, there's animals, there's like waterfalls, there's crevices, you can fall, there's rocks, you, the, like there's a lot of damage you can do way deep in the woods. And couple that with like a, with a crazy person on the loose trying to kill you, it's, it's just, it works really well because you're, you're, you're fighting the killer and you're fighting the, uh, you know, the, you're, you're, you're fighting nature, you know, it's, uh, it's, it works really well. Um, and this, this this film, Just Before Dawn, does a really good job of conveying the danger of the woods. Um, you know, it's, like, th this film actually kind of plays, like, it's, it's obviously one part slasher film, but it, it also is, like, one part, like, a like a survivor film. Um, you know, you're surviving, like, the, the, the elements, you know, kind of like, like, like a deliverance, you know, like, there's other stuff going on in deliverance, but, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting nature as well, and I just, and that um that struggle is is a big part in this film as well which i i, I really like um the 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 scenery in this film is is, is amazing you know there's, there's some really good set pieces like a, like a waterfall there's like a really cool rope bridge that they have to cross um they they utilize this setting uh really 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 well and it feels like you're like on part, like you're on the adventure with with these with these people as they're trekking through the woods, and then when the stakes get high and the tension, and the, they they realize it's a killer on the loose, um, you you're kind of in it with them, you know. And it it's it's hard to run away when you're you know out in these some of these like natural elements are are uh, in your way. Um, yeah, it's it's really good, you know. And, and you know the the film it has it has like. The, the, the kills are pretty good you know there's some fun kills some good practical effects for sure the killer's all right um you know maybe maybe one of the weaker parts i, I was i wasn't crazy about the killer in this there is a, a twist reveal which again it, it's all right um but like i said that the horror in this film really comes from just like the 
the elements, the out in the deep woods, the darkness. Uh, it's just that that's really where the horror comes in, and then place it around a, the you know the the template of a slasher film, and it's it, it just works really well. Um, and as a bonus, the the ending fight of this of this <laughs> of this film, the way that that fight ends is is amazing. I've I had never seen it before, and I don't know if it if it if logically it would work the way that one of the you know the the survivors fights off the uh, the killer at the end. I don't know if that would is that if it's feasible. I don't know, but it it's fantastic to watch. So really good bonus for the end of this film. So yeah, so coming to number twenty eight just before dawn. All right, let's move on to number 27. All right, so coming to number 27 from 1981, we have Bloody Moon. Now, this is another uh, European slasher, courtesy of Spain and director Jess Franco, who has quite the reputation for making, you know... Um, exploitation films of all of all different types and this is his take on the 80s slasher and um yeah it, it's great it, it's it's really fun now this this one unlike you know unlike nightmare beach which was you know kind of going for that fun vibe uh this one is not going for a fun vibe this is going for like a sleazy type of feel and Boy, is it sleazy. Um, you know, we get, you know, obviously it's a slasher film, so you get your typical kills, and there's a lot of, like, you know, you get your, your sex scenes, your nudity, and all that stuff. But they, they mix them together quite a bit here. Um, and, and they do it really well. Like, there's many women who are, you know, getting killed in uh, various states of undress and all that stuff. It's, um, yeah, they, they really mix the, the, the violence and the nudity together here sometimes. And um, I, I, I like that. I like that in these films. So, um, you know, coming from Jess Franco, if you've seen any of his other stuff, it's it has that feel. Like, uh, so it, it's, uh, I don't know, it works really well for, for this type of slasher film, I think. Um, the setting for this film is, is pretty good. You know, it's a school setting. It's like a college like a language school where it seems like it's either like Scandinavian or like German women are coming to Spain to, to learn Spanish. Um, all the women are like these blonde. Yeah. I don't know if they're like, I, I think they're German. Like they're all these beautiful German women coming to, yeah, to, to, to learn how to speak Spanish for some reason. And, um, but yeah, the school's, the school setting is, is pretty nice. It's on like the water kind of, there's like beach and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely a cool, um, unique setting. Um, the but you know that the highlight of, of Bloody Moon is is the kills. The kills in here are they're 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 pretty graphic. Um, they're they're really creative. They're gory at times. They're pretty mean spirited. Um, yeah, the kills are definitely the highlight. Lots of practical effects. Lots of blood. Um, but there's, you know, there's, there's one kill that stands out and it's, um, it's a circular saw kill and it's, it's one of the best kills in the entire genre. It's, it's fantastic. They, the camera lingers on this kill. You, you see, <laughs> you see the blade, you see the body part it's cutting through. Um, and then, you know, the camera cuts to a piece of body on the floor. Then it cuts back to the body that's missing the, it, missing the body piece it goes back and forth. It's um, yeah. The, the this the circular saw kill is uh, it's worth the price of admission alone. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. Bloody Moon is is a sleazy slasher, and I I love those. So this is this is a great one for me. So um, yeah, come at number twenty seven, Bloody Moon. All right, let's take a look at number twenty six. All right, so coming at number 26 from 1980, we have Terror Train. Uh, now, this is this is an early film within the, within the genre, you know, 1980, and it's um, in many ways your stereotypical slasher, the, you know, the, the style of film that we, that we all think of kind of when, when we're thinking about these films, you know, and it's starring Jamie Lee Curtis, which, you know, you couldn't ask for more than that. Like, whether you like her or not, she's kind of an icon in these types of films, just from her early work, she, you know, she did a handful of these films, and, um, yeah, it, it kind of, I don't know, for me, it, 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 she just kind of adds a, um, a feel to these films, just because it's, it just feels familiar, I guess, I don't know, um, but I like Jamie Lee Curtis in these films, so, 
Um, but yeah, the, one of the highlights of this film, obviously, is is the is the setting. You know, this takes place on a, on a train. There's like a big, I think like the like university students, or college students, and they're um, yeah, they're on like celebration. They're having like like a costume party. They're all dressed up and they're on this train. They're drinking. They're having a good time. It's so it's, it's kind of like a party setting, but it takes place in this train. And then when the killing starts, it's great. This is a fantastic setting for a slasher. You know, it's very claustrophobic. You know, there's not a lot of room, there's not a lot of spaces to run, there's not a lot of places to hide, you can't get off the trains, it's moving, it's, it's great, it's, it's a fantastic setting, um, for these, for a train, um, yeah, it's, it's great, and there, there's this really cool co concept I always liked, is like, it's like, like a costume swapping, as the killer kills someone, um, like they're wearing a costume, and then, they take the person's costume that they killed, and they become that identity. So if, if, if anyone says, oh yeah, I saw so-and-so go into cabin 5 with the person in this costume, then they look for that person, and they're in a different costume, and it's, it's just kind of, it's a, it's a good concept. It, it keeps you guessing, and keeps the, the people on the train unsure of what's exactly going on. You, you never know what costume they're wearing. It's, it works really well. I just, I, I just, it's just a, a fun little concept that I've always liked. Um... Yeah, and, and some of these masks are, there, there's some creepy masks that fit really well here, so I, I like that. Um, the kills are fun, there's some fun kills on this. Um, the killer itself uh, is pretty creepy, um, especially like the at the end, the reveal. There, we've seen this type of reveal in many of these films before, and this is an earlier one, so maybe this is one of the first ones. But um, it, it's a creepy reveal, it, it always works really well for me. Uh, so I, I really like that about it. It's a little predictable, I guess, but, um, it, it's still kind of shocking and, and creepy, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I really like that. Terror Train, this film just has a, just, it just, it just has that classic feeling. It's just a classic slasher. It has all the elements that work really well, and, uh, it just, it has that amazing train setting. It just sets it apart, so, yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed Terror Train, so, yeah, come, that was Number 26. All right, let's move on. Take a look at number 25. Okay, so coming at number 25 from 1989, we have Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland. Uh, now, <laughs> the... This is one of the most fun films in the entire genre. Not because of the setting or goof, like just something like, you know, like a chopping mall, at like a fun mall or 80s vibe. It's, <laughs> this film just has a weird balance. It just, it, it perfectly balances like the standard 80s, um, you know, tropes with this weird sense of like black humor, dark humor. And it works really well. And, um, I, I can remember seeing this for the first time, and it threw me off, because, you know, I was expecting, you know, Sleepaway Camp 2, after the first one, and, um, there is humor in the first Sleepaway Camp film, but this one is, is so different, um, um, the, these sequels are so different from the original film that it, it's, at, at first I wasn't sure, I was like, what am I watching, this is completely different, but, um, by the, by the time you, you sit through these sequels, it's, they're, they're amazing, and it works really well, they were totally going for something different from, like, the original film, and it, it works really well, um, pa Pamela Springsteen is so good as, as Angela, um, you know, we all like and love, you know, um, you know, it was a, a Felicia Rose from, um, you know, the, the, the original film, she's great Angela, but Pamela Springsteen kind of made the role her own through these sequels, and she, and it's just just her delivery, just the look on her face, like the, like like I said the humor, like the dark humor as she's doing these terrible things. But uh, you, you're kind of cheering for her. It, it's 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 weird. She's, you yeah, you you're rooting for the killer, and it, you're enjoying it. You're having a fun time. It, it it's a it's really weird, but um. It's just something they're 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 great, and of course it's set at like a sleepaway camp setting, which again is just one of the most iconic and the best places to set these, uh, like a slasher film in. It just it just works really well, um, and they utilize the sleepaway camp setting like awesome. Like you get like the the cabins, the lake, the like the archery, like all like the activities, um, like 
the canoeing and just every everything that you associate with um, sleepaway camp they they use and they incorporate into this into the film and it's 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 so good the kills are great of course they're 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 really fun they're creative like these they're unique you don't see kills like this in many other films because they use the camp itself um as as part of the kills and it's just it's they're awesome um they're really mean <laughs> some of these kills are really mean spirited but again you're laughing at them because they're so creative and unique and uh Angela seems to be having a fun time as she's doing it, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, like I said, it's a weird tone that, that these films set, um, you know, the film has been, like, the, you know, the, obvious, like, the necessary nudity, like, it, it has everything you want, um, there's not too many films that, um, are like the Sleepaway Camp sequels, they're just, they're just really fun, really unique, and I, um, I love them, so yeah, so kind of number 25, Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland. Let's go on and take a look at number 24. Okay, so coming to number 24 from 1988, we have Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. Yeah, uh, no surprise here. Um, both of these films, to me, I, I can't, I, I don't really differentiate them. Like, they, they seem exactly the same. So if I have part three at number 25, I have part two at number 24. Um, th they seem like just one big film, one, one big continuation for me. I think they were filmed back to back and released a year apart. Um, so yeah, it's just, they're very similar. Everything I said about part three is, holds true for, for part two here. Um, I, I feel like I like part two a little better just because it feels like the ideas are a little more fresh because they were, you know, they were probably excited to make this film. They had all these unique, creative kill ideas and the, the jokes and the humor. And, um, yeah, maybe by part three we had seen it. Um, they just, they, it just seemed newer and more fun, original in part two, I guess. Um, I don't know, like the, like the setting is the same. Like I know they're different camps, but the setting feels very similar um, the kills feel, uh, I don't know, like I said, I, I feel like the kills in part two feel just a little more original, a little more fun, but really, I'm, we're splitting hairs between the two films, they're all, they're very similar, um, and again, like, part two, it's just, it's just a fun experience, and there's, there's nothing quite like it, um, if, like I said, if, earlier, if, if you've only seen the original Sleepaway Camp film, um, don't expect the same thing. Like I said, there is a little bit of humor in that one for sure, but this is a whole different beast, and um, they're they're just great. They're really unique, and you you have a blast watching them. So yeah, I don't have much more to say. Parts two and parts three, they're like I said, I I, I view them as basically very similar because they they feel the same to me. So all right, let's move on and uh, let's take a look at number twenty three. Okay, so coming at number 23 from 1981, we have Final Exam. Um, now, this this is a film I, I obviously, I, I love this film. This is, you know, a college campus setting, which, again, is another setting that works really well for the slasher film. And this one captures it. This, this is one of the films that captures that setting really, like, just perfectly in, like, the early 80s. Um... They just they, they use everything they, like like the the outside exterior courtyard shots cafeteria the dorm rooms the gymnasium the classrooms the teachers private quarters there's like um, you know music rooms there's just um, clock towers or bell towers they just they they use it all it's 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 fantastic um, people complain about this film how the killer has no motive just shows up and starts killing people and. Like, there's no reveal, there's no story as to why he's doing it. Because, you know, usually these films, there's a reason why the killers are doing this. You know, somebody wronged them five, ten years ago, and they're getting their revenge or whatnot. Uh, but Final Exam, he just, the killer just shows up and just starts killing people. And I like that. It's it's different. It's unique. And I, you don't always need that motive. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like that. It's just 
the, the, the kids on campus are faced with this situation and they gotta they gotta power through they gotta survive and um, only not many of them do um, yeah it's it's great and the kills in this film are vicious man like there's a couple like the the killer's weapon of choice is a is a big bladed knife and there's a couple like kills when he's like just stabbing people and it's just you just see him just going to town on these bodies and it's it's very visceral very graphic and um I don't know. I, I, I like the kills in this and like some of the practical effects are really good. Um, yeah, Final Exam is just it's just a fun, you know, it's clearly a rip off of Halloween. There's a lot of similarities to, to John Carpenter's Halloween, um, which which is not a bad thing, you know, that it, it has that tone. Some of the music is similar. Uh, some of the camera angles with the killer, like the like the, the POV, the the seeing the killer like stalking hiding out behind things it's just um i don't know i i think it's it, it's a lower budget feel uh, it doesn't feel like a highly produced but that's kind of the charm to it um this little college isn't it's just like a small dinky little college um some of the characters it feels like animal house some of these characters like there's like the crazy wall man that like the, the the easy girls like the, the good girl the um you know the the nerdy guy radish is is like the the nerdy good guy and he's he's one of the best characters in all of the 80s slash he's so memorable his his character is is great man um, yeah there's a lot of things i like about final exam so i don't know yeah coming to number 23 1981 final exam one of the one of, one of the good ones all right let's move on to number 22 All right, so coming at number 22 from 1981 as well, we have Graduation Day. Um, yeah, I was I, I was going back and forth where to rank Final Exam, Graduation Day. They're very close to me. Um, again, both school settings. Um, this one is more of a like a high school setting as opposed to Final Exam with the college setting. Um, I don't know. Any given day, I might rank Final Exam higher than this, but again, they're really close. Um, I, I just... I, I love graduation day. I, I think um, I decided to put it a little ahead just because I think there's more going on here. The you know the the high school setting is fun. There's like a bigger cast. There's more characters. There, there's like a backstory. Um, and I, I know I just said I don't need the motive or the or the, the reason, but it does fit the genre a, li a little better. Um, that's what we're used to, and it, it has a pretty good one here. Um, why the killer is doing what they're doing. Um, and then there's like the sports theme, you know, like this is like student athletes being hunted down like a track team. There's like, um, so you see like people getting killed with like a football. There's like javelins. Um, it's, it's really fun. It's, it, the kills are a little more creative, a little more unique, whereas final exam, it, it's basically just a knife and it, 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 um, which is great, which is what we like. But, um, I, I enjoy the creativity of some of these, some of these kills, um, I don't know, and there, there's some fun stuff, there's like a really fun disco scene, like the graduation, um, a great band is playing music, and they're on like roller skates, and it just, it feels really late 70s, early 80s, that vibe, um, yeah, there, there's a lot to like in graduation day, um, you got Christopher George, who, who you know, I, I love it when, you know, these films lend a um, you know, a serious actor, because it really adds something. Then you have Linnea Quigley, who's always fun, and you know, she's not a big part, but she, she has enough parts where she takes her clothes off, um, a couple of times. Um, so that's always a nice little bonus. Um, Vanna White from Wheel of Fortune is in this, in like a s very brief, but she has some talks, some lines that, that she spits out. Um, yeah, I don't know. Graduation Day is just just one of the classics. It just has that classic slasher feel. Early 80s, like 81, the height of the genre. Um, all of the stereotypical, you know, the, like the, the setting, the, the kills, the nudity, the, the the final chase sequence, the final fight, the reveal, the twist. It just, it has it all. It, it's great. Um, the killer is okay, um, you know. Uh, I don't know. I just, yeah, I love Graduation Day. It, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's... Like I said, it's one of the classics, so, yeah, coming at number 22, Graduation Day. All right, let's wrap this list up with the last one. Uh, take a look at number 21. All 
All right, so coming in at number 21 from 1987, we have Stage Fright. Uh, again, another you know European type film. Um, that's three on this little list here. Um, but yeah, this is an Italian film, and you know this is equal parts slasher, equal parts giallo. Um, this one really rides the line, um, but it's it's definitely a definitely a slasher flick in my opinion. Um, the the first thing that stands out that when I think about this film is just the, um, it's just how how stylish it is. It's just so. Um, Everything about this film is just very like stylistic, just like the the actors, the clothing they wear and their their hairstyles. Uh, it just has a really strong eighties European vibe. Um, but then just the way it, it's filmed, some of the shots um, are just very like planned, like very well. You can just tell like there's shots of just. Um, like feathers floating in the air, like circling the killer as he's sitting super still on like on on this on the like on the stage of the theater. Um, the kills are stylistic. Some of the nude scene, everything is just very. Uh, it just there's a certain look. There's there's nothing quite like it. Um, I just I absolutely love it. And like I said, the the setting for this it takes place in like a like a theater, like a Broadway style stage setting, and it's great. You know, they they get locked in. They're rehearsing for a, like a play and they're locked in and the killer's on the loose wearing this crazy ridiculous owl head costume which is part of the play um and it, it it's great it's what a fantastic location to set a slasher from because he and they utilize it really well you like like there's scenes like set on stage of like the actual theater like below the stage like there's like things like for like stage hands to go under the stage um backstage area there's like the changing rooms the makeup room there's um like the director's office there's up in the rafters there's like catwalks for like the lighting crew and all that stuff and they, they there's scenes everywhere it's it's fantastic it's really good um the kills are great there's some really good practical effects and like i said they're really stylistic some of these kills like just the the, the use of blood and all this the way that some of the the scenes are filmed um it's it's great man like um yeah it's stage fright is 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 really unique um like i said the, the way the story and the plot plays out it, it's very giallo-esque um but that's again it's kind of the flavor but it's definitely leaning more towards slasher so um it's not your stereotypical early 80s slasher those are what i usually prefer but um when films are different but they're done as well as stage fright is uh i i just i absolutely love it so yeah coming at number 21 stage fright um fantastic one of one of the best uh european you know foreign slashers i think there's maybe one more i have on my list that that i have a little higher but there's not too many of those that uh like these foreign slashers that are as good as stage fright in my opinion all right, that's it, guys. So, um, yeah, so that's the look at numbers 30 through 21. So we're getting down there. We're getting, well, we have two lists, two, two lists left, huh? So, uh, yeah, top 20 coming up. So stay tuned for that. Number 20 through 11 will be up next. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to that. So, yeah, all right, until next time. All right, see ya.